Hey guys, Scott Torre here to bring you some tips about league starting. With the new Path of Exile heist being right around the corner, there's actually a lot you could be doing right now to better set yourself up for success to have the most fluid league start as possible. If you have any particular tips that I may not have hit, please feel free to let, let us know down in the comments down below. Appreciate you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And if you do like it, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Without further ado, let's get right into it. In this video, we're going to discuss setting goals for ourselves as well as boss practicing. Then we're going to talk about how to select a build for league starts and how to identify what the best build is for us. Then we're going to talk about practicing the storyline, then identifying gems that we're going to be using to help facilitate us getting to maps quicker. And then finally, we're going to talk about what acts we should be doing our ascendancies as well as the league mechanics and whether or not we should do them during the storyline. Now let's get into setting goals and practicing bosses. All right, the first thing we're gonna discuss is what are our goals? We have to set ourselves up for success by establishing goals that we can actually reasonably hit. If I wanna hit maps in, I don't know, under eight hours, then I need to start planning for that and start getting prepared on how, how I plan on obtaining that and achieving that. Where do I wanna be at within the first 24 hours, the first 48 hours, then eventually the, the first week? Obviously, we have to set aside time to our to ourselves to be able to play the game. And then we also have to identify, you know, how much time we're going to be able to invest, whether you, know, you have work or school, et cetera. Um, and then you also have to identify once you reach your target goal during the first 24 hours, whether it be maps, um, what is it you're going to do from there? If you're part of trade league, you're probably just trying to make a lot of currency. So that way you can enable your build to start, you know, progressing toward the content that you're actually wanting to do. If you're SSF, you're probably just trying to get to the content you want to do. Um, so one of the big money makers that we're seeing a lot during league starts is specific target bossing um, at the very beginning of a league. Uh, a lot of people usually tend to see themselves farming at Siri, uh, maybe trying to hit uh, Sirius as fast as possible so they can start getting those Awakener orbs, those Awakened gems, et cetera, et cetera. Um, whatever whatever your, your poison may be. You want to utilize this time now before the new league starts to start practicing those fights. So personally, I know I'm not really the greatest at the at the Cirrus fight. I mean, I can do it. I do it quite often, but it's it's something I'm not super comfortable with yet. So the, this one or two weeks leading up to the new league, I find myself practicing some of these bigger end bosses. Obviously, we're not going to league start into an Uber Elder, as you can see in this video here, but it's still a boss that I kind of want to practice while I have the gear for it, uh, which leads me to my next point. Whenever you start practicing end game bosses that you plan on farming during the early portions of the league, make sure you're utilizing gear that you can actually reasonably get with the new league. So since we're currently in harvest and everyone has mirror tier, just tier one out ridiculous loot, you know, set that aside, pick up gear that you can actually probably get during a normal, like old school crafting type of days, uh, whether it be just maybe tier three life, a little bit of res, maybe even a little bit of damage. Um, and put that on your character is something you're probably going to to better emulate for the new league and get those boss practices in. Next, we're going to discuss how to identify what is a good league starting build. So the next thing we're going to talk about is actually one of the most important parts of this video, and that's selecting a league starting build. Now, a lot of the experienced players within the community tend to wait till patch notes to come out before they actually select their league starting build. And that's a fair argument. Generally speaking, patch notes come out and they just nerf all kinds of builds or they just buff all kinds of builds. And it could really, it could really play a huge factor in, you know, what build it is you're, you're hoping to play because it could all completely change the play style for it within that long manifesto that, that gets put out. Usually I want to say it's like what, two or three days, before the actual new league starts. And we actually want to be doing some practicing before, before getting to that point. So generally speaking, I say at least pick something that you're, you're kind of eyeballing and maybe add two or three other builds onto that list in case that particular build you're hoping to play just gets nerfed into the ground. Now, how do we identify what is a good league starting build? This video is not here to tell you, hey, you should be playing Costagero, Toxic Rain, Bane Occultist, you know, whatever, whatever. There's a plethora of YouTube videos out there that are going to tell you like the top five meta, you know, league starting builds. I'm more here to tell you how to identify if something is a good league starting build 
So that way you can then pursue the build that, that looks the most exciting and fun for you to play. You don't have to stick to the top five meta or whatever. Now, some good, you know, information based stuff that you can, you can do a little bit of research toward is what are players currently playing in hardcore SSF events that are going on right now in the community. Um, I feel like this is a great opportunity for you to, to see the builds that are being showcased to get to end game content where they're killing these Uber elders, these awaken eight Cirruses, et cetera, et cetera, with limited resources available to them from the beginning. Um, that's, it's kind of a perfect, you know, showcase as to what builds are, are reasonably able to get to the content that you're looking to get to now all by currently during the, during these community events, they are using things like harvest league, which is not going to be available to us. However, I do still think it's, it's a very valuable portion of information that we're able to get. Now, what makes these builds really good to get to end game content and the content that I'm trying to pursue? Uh, is it gear enabling? So if you're looking at a build that requires a lot of really expensive gear, maybe it's like a low life or you need a six link shavs or something like that. I'm not saying that's impossible to get. I'm just saying that items that are just, or builds that are gear required or gear dependent, that's expensive gear, generally speaking, isn't the greatest always for league starts. Um, you're looking at gear that's going to, you're going to look at builds that's going to require gear that gets you at least to, I personally like to hit at least red maps before I start having to invest in the more expensive stuff. If you feel as though you can comfortably get into yellows and get to that point where you can just easily farm it with relatively super cheap gear that's easily to obtain, as well as the ability to kill a wide array of bosses. I think that's a win. That would be a great league starter build as well as something that you can easily facilitate to go from an act one playthrough to maps within a really fast time frame. because that's something we're about to get into here in a little bit is time is money. Now we're going to discuss practicing the storyline and getting prepared to getting to maps quick, as well as identifying what gems we're going to be using and how to obtain them quickly. So that way we spend less time in town. So the next thing we're going to be talking about is practicing league start practicing. You're going to hear a lot of streamers, YouTubers, and just experienced players talking about it all the time. Heist leagues right around the corner. I need to start practicing this upcoming week. Generally what that means is getting from act one, that league start to maps as fast as possible. Cause as we've stated before, the faster you get to maps start, the faster you can start investing in currency, the faster you can start doing the content that you want to be doing. Now, one of the biggest things you can do to mitigate time to be able to achieve getting to maps within your targeted goal range is to minimize the amount of time you spend in town. For every second, or seconds add up to minutes, minutes add up to se uh, hours, hours add up to days, and it's just all a bunch of useless time that you can just focus more so, more so toward finishing the act and getting to the next one. Now, how do we mitigate the amount of time we spend in town? That is, once we select our build, we actually set up our loot filter in accordance with it. So let's say we identified Caustic Arrow as the build we're going to be running. Now with Caustic Arrow, we know most of the gems are going to be green. All bite, there tends to be one or two, like concentrated effect, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but we know most of the gear is we want it to drop with green color sockets. And that'd be dexterity based gear, better known as evasion based gear. Um, intelligence gear would be blue sockets for a va or excuse me, energy shield. Armor tends to drop mostly red sockets. So once you've identified what build you're going to be running and you look at what color gems you're going to be mostly getting, you're going to want to set your loot filter up to really only show you the base type of gear that you're going to be actually using that you can actually then link and socket your gems into. So I obviously want mostly evas only evasion based gear to, to be dropping because it's going to give me the most green sockets. That means I'm not going to have to mess around with gear in town. I'm going to have like a four link drop that has, I don't know, three greens and a blue. That'd be a perfect situation for me. Um, you set your loot filter up. I'm going to actually have the link down below for filter blade. This is one that pretty much everyone in the community uses. If you don't already have a, a filter. This is going to be vital towards your path of exile, you know, endeavors. Um, you can easily set this up right now. So that way, once the new league starts, you can easily you know, activate it, turn it on, and then actually use it instead of having to mess around with it during the time frame. So 
uh, like I said, hop over to that website, start messing around with it, put in the gear that you want to see, because the, the less gear you're actually looking at, the less time you spend like, Hey, I, I don't need to be seeing axes or daggers or I don't know, energy shield based gear, whatever it actually makes, it actually cuts your time down really substantially faster. So we've also identified that. So caustic arrow is going to be our skill. Um, you're going to want to set up in path of building. If you don't have this downloaded, I'm going to have the link to that down below as well. Every player needs to have path of building for sure. And you want to put in gear that you're probably going to get. Ignore this gear. This is just me importing this character and then changing the gems around from the awakened to normal. Um, but you want to put in gear that you're probably reasonably going to get. Um, ignore this DPS. Like I said, this is more for the example of the socketed gems we've selected. So we selected Caustic Arrow and these are the gems we're going to be using. And what we do is we copy and paste that over into my notepad. Um, the reason why I use this notepad is this is information that I can have on my second monitor that I can just easily glance over to and refer to while I'm pushing through the axe and trying to get to maps as quickly as possible. So I've identified caustic arrow. I get it in act one. No problem. Concentrate effect is going to be in act three. And I actually select where I'm going to be obtaining each one of these gems as essentially checkpoints that I need to look at as I'm progressing through the axe. And why is this important? Because that way I'm not spending any time in town saying, Hey, where do I get this gem again? I've got to look it up real quick. I've already identified it as I'm, as I'm going into a new act, I just glance over here. Hey, I'm going into act three. Oh, I've got, I'm going to be getting concentrated effect during this act. I'm going to be getting swift affliction. And you should also identify how many of those gems you need to be grabbing in case maybe you have a multiple gem link set up. Um, and you need to get two swift afflictions, et cetera, et cetera. More so for like your essence string contagion builds. Um, but we're not going to dive too much into that. So what I usually do is I bring up the POE wiki. Uh, I usually just type in POE and then the support gem. And it's going to bring me to one of these pages where it actually shows me the classes, what act those classes get them in. So in this case, which shadow Templar Scion get it in act two from Yina after the quest sharp and cruel. Uh, everyone else gets it at least in act three by Siosa, a fixture of fate. And that's when I've identified that I'm going to be getting it because I have selected Ranger here. Um, so this is an easy tool you can use to identify what acts you're going to be getting your, your support gems from. And then you're also going to order them in, in order from effectiveness of those support gems. So which one's going to give me the most DPS, um, out of all of these supports. That way, once new gear drops, that's linked and colored accordingly, I don't have to mess around and look at my tool tip to say, Hey, this, you know, if I put void manipulation, um, that's going to give me more DPS and efficacy or vice versa. I already have it in order. I just glance at this. Okay. So concentrate effect, void manipulation is going to be on my three link. Now, if four link drops, I know I'm immediately going to put swift affliction in there. If a five link drops or if a six link drops, hopefully that'd be awesome. Uh, as well as the colors. So if I have a two blue, two green, you know, pair of gloves that drop nice. My first four link, obviously caustic arrow is going to be a green conk effects can be my blue void manipulation is going to be that other green. And then I'm actually going to use efficacy because it's my only other blue on this list. And we're able to then four link. So it's in order in accordance with merit as well as what colors, as well as what acts I'm going to be get, getting them in. So super easy tool to use just glance over okay i'm going into this act too easy that's where i'm going to get those gems i'm going to put them off to the side so i can actually get gear in which i can socket them in no problem finally we're going to discuss ascendancy acts like what when we should be doing our ascendancies as well as when we should be doing league mechanics whether or not we should do them during the storyline or during maps Alrighty guys, the last two things we're going to be talking about in this video is going to be our ascendancy as well as league mechanic. Now, whenever you're practicing your league starting going from act one to act five, something you really need to identify is to when you're going to be doing your ascendancies. When are you going to kill a Zario and what act are you going to do it in? Now, generally speaking, there's some builds out there that can easily do it in act three. Whenever you get your last trial, you just hop over, knock out a Zario, boom, done. And there's also some builds out there that are still great league starters that just tend to be a little bit slower when it comes to boss T boss DPS, as well as navigating traps, et cetera, et cetera, that tend to wait till more act four, act five. 
I know me personally, I like to do it in Act Five just because I know it'll be easy and I know it'll be able to get through it and kill him without without any problem. Doesn't really matter because it's gonna take the same amount of time whether you do it now versus then. Um, you just want to make sure you're not wasting any of that added time going through the lab, getting to its Ario just to be killed. So something you need to identify when you need when you're gonna be doing each one of those during your league starting practice. Now the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the new league mechanic. Generally, I personally like to wait until maps before really diving into the new league mechanic. That's not to say you can't be doing it in the meantime. Things like Delirium, where you just where it's at the very beginning of the, uh, the the tile set area, you can easily just hit it and then go through it and proceed. Um, bear in mind, generally speaking, new league mechanics tend to be make the map area a little bit a little bit more stronger, a little bit more difficult. So you're also trying not to die a bunch of times. Um, but there are potential times where, you know, the league mechanic is very facilitating for getting through the act, such as harvest. We saw a lot of players during some of these races utilizing their harvest during the level leveling phase. That's something to kind of keep in mind as well while we're researching what teasers are going to be available to us and what kind of information we're going to get about the new league. But like I said, by default, I generally like to wait to mess around with getting too much into the new league mechanics until maps. because It's also going to be dropping higher tier item levels and like more usable stuff during the end game and more valuable stuff so without further ado appreciate you guys for for taking the time out of your day to watch this video hopefully you've you've learned some new tips that that i can pass along to you and if you do have any suggestions for new ideas for videos that you would like like to see please feel free to let me know in the comments down below make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys again next time